this is an excellent online learning platform for uh, IIT NEET aspirants and now today we are going to start the 11th class live classes and our program will be almost like offline coaching daily you will have classes subject wise uh, Monday to Saturday and uh, every day you can get the assignments uh, called DPPs in the app and also every Sunday we are going to conduct tests and uh, uh, give the result al along with the analysis. Okay. So, please make use of all the features by downloading Yapmaster app. Okay. Now, let us start the mathematics session. The first topic we are going to uh, discuss is quadratic equations. In this first, <coughs> let us discuss some basic points. Uh, of course, all of you must be aware of uh, many things in quadratic equations, but we will practice uh, the ideas and uh, questions. Important points in this chapter are, if a is not equal to 0, then the equation a x square plus b x plus c is equal to 0 is called a quadratic equation. Why a is not equal to 0? If a is equal to 0, it will be a first degree equation. A second degree equation in x is called quadratic equation. So, that is why a is not equal to 0. Okay. The values of x satisfying this quadratic equation, the equation are called roots of the equation or you can call them as zeros of the equation. Okay there will be exactly two roots for every quadratic equation, not more than two, not less than two. But sometimes the two roots may be equal. You may get only one value of x satisfying this, but even then we have to say that there are two roots, but they are equal. Okay. Next point is, if the equation a x square plus b x plus c is equal to 0, is satisfied by three distinct values of x. This is contradicting my previous statement. What is the previous statement? There will be exactly two roots for every quadratic equation. But here I am saying, if the equation a x square plus b x plus c is equal to 0 is satisfied by three distinct values of x, how is it possible? That means, it is possible only when all the coefficients are zeros. If all the coefficients are zeros, the equation becomes 0 x square plus 0 x plus 0 is equal to 0. Then it will be satisfied by not only three values, infinite number of distinct values. Then it is called an identity. If whenever the equation whenever the equation is satisfied by any value of x, it is called an identity. So, a x square plus b x plus c is equal to 0 is called an identity. That means, identity means a is equal to b is equal to c is equal to 0. In that case, it is not uh, it is not called a quadratic equation because a is equal to 0. Okay. Next, the roots of a x square plus b x plus c is equal to 0 or minus b plus r minus root b square minus 4 a c by 2 a. All of you are aware of this. And this root b square minus 4 a c is called discriminant of the quadratic equation. It can be denoted by delta or d, capital D. Okay. Next point is, let alpha and beta be the roots of a x square plus b x plus c is equal to 0. Then sum of the roots is alpha plus beta is equal to minus b by a, you are all aware. Product of the roots alpha beta is equal to c by a. And magnitude of the difference between the roots that is mod alpha minus beta is root delta by mod a. Of course, this formula is <coughs> not familiar with uh, many students. So, remember this. This formula is also very useful in many problems. How do you get this? Alpha minus beta whole square is equal to alpha plus beta whole square minus 4 alpha beta. 
is it not? Substitute alpha plus beta is minus b by a, alpha beta is c by a, then this becomes b square by a square minus 4 c by a. Then what will you get? Taking a square LCM, b square minus 4 a c by a square, b square minus 4 a c is delta discriminant by a square. Now, if you take a square root, square root of alpha minus beta whole square is mod alpha minus beta will be equal to what? Root delta by mod a, square root of a square is mod a. Okay. Next, if alpha and beta are the roots of the quadratic equation ax square plus bx plus e is equal to 0, then we can write the quadratic expression only that the polynomial if you take second degree polynomial that is called quadratic expression. That quadratic expression can be written as a into x minus alpha into x minus beta. Next, the quadratic equation whose roots are alpha and beta is x square minus sum of the roots into x plus product of the roots is equal to 0. This is how we write a quadratic equation when the roots are given. Next, we have to discuss two points, rational factorization. If you have a x square plus b x plus c is equal to 0. If it has rational roots, then we can get them by factorizing. That factorization method I will discuss. Directly you can find the roots by the formula minus b plus r minus root delta by 2a. Or we can if possible factorize and get the roots quickly. What is the method of factorization? First, you take a into c and we should express a c as product of two numbers such that the sum of these two numbers is equal to b. Okay. Then you write b x, uh, you write b as this plus this and then you will be able to factorize. For example, 2 x square minus x minus 1 is equal to 0. I want to get the roots by factorization then 2 into minus 1 is what? Minus 2. Write minus 2 as a product of two factors such that their sum is equal to minus 1. How can you write minus 2 into 1? Then minus 2 plus 1 is minus 1. So, split this middle term, write the middle term as minus 2 x plus 1 into x minus 1 is equal to 0. Now, you will be able to factorize it from these two, 2 x is common into x minus 1, from these two 1 is common, 1 into x minus 1 is equal to 0. Then again taking x minus 1 common from these two, we get x minus 1 into 2 x plus 1 is equal to 0. Then you will get the roots, either this is 0 or this is 0. If this is 0, x is equal to 1 or if this is 0, x is equal to minus 1 by 2. This is one method of finding the rational roots. If the roots are rational, this method will help. Otherwise, we have to find the roots by the formula minus b plus r minus root delta by 2a. This is about rational factorization. Now, in this chapter, you need to have some knowledge, little knowledge about complex numbers, introduction of complex numbers. You know that square root of a number x is defined, defined means it is real only when x is positive, square root of 4 is 2, you should not write plus or minus, square root of 4 is 2. Now, if x is negative, then there will be no real square root. Then that number is called complex number, square root of a negative number is called imaginary number. If uh, let us take the basic negative number minus 1, root minus 1 is an imaginary number and this is denoted by i, 
I represents imaginary number, you can call it as iota. Then I square will be minus 1. Suppose you want square root of minus 4, then write it as root minus 1 into root 4, root 4 is 2, root minus 1 is i, so we will write it as 2i. So, this is about imaginary number. Now, if you take sum or difference of a real number and imaginary number, it is called a complex number. For example, let us take 2 plus 3i, 2 is real and 3i is imaginary, then the sum is called complex number or similarly minus 3 plus 5i is imaginary complex number and uh, uh, you can take 3 minus 4i is a complex number. Okay. So, if x and y are real numbers, x plus yi or x plus iy is called a complex number. Okay. This knowledge is enough, we will proceed further. Let us solve some problems on these points discussed today. First question. Find the number of distinct values of k for which the equation, the quadratic equation is given, will have three distinct roots. Again, I am contradicting my statement. How can a quadratic equation have three roots, three distinct roots? It is an identity. Okay. So, immediately every coefficient must be 0. If it is satisfied by three distinct values of x, then every coefficient should be 0. So, k square minus k minus 2 should be 0 and k square plus 2 k minus 8 should be 0 and k square minus 4 should be 0. All values should be 0 simultaneously for the same value of k. Let us solve this quadratic equation and uh, you know the factorization, I hope. This can be factorized as k plus 1 into k minus 2. is equal to 0, then k will be minus 1 or 2. Let us solve this, this quadratic equation. This can be factorized as k minus 2 into k plus 4. The method of factorization I have already explained just now. Then what are the roots? k will be 2 or minus 4. If this is 0, this can be factorized as k plus 2 into k minus 2 is equal to 0, then you will get k is equal to minus 2 or plus 2. So, we got uh, 2 values here, 2 values here, 2 values here and 2 is common. Now, all of them should be 0 simultaneously. For what value of k, all these coefficients will be 0 simultaneously you have to take the common value. For k is equal to 2 only, this is 0, this is 0, this is 0. If you take k is equal to minus 1, this is 0, but this is not 0, this is not 0. For k is equal to minus 4, this is not 0, but this is 0, this is not 0. So, what is the answer? The value of k should be equal to 2. So, how many distinct values of k are existing? Only 1. Number of distinct values of k is only 1 that is k, k is equal to 2. Next question, if alpha and beta are the roots of a x square plus b x plus c is equal to 0, find the value of 1 by a alpha plus b whole square plus 1 by a beta plus b whole square. Usually, many students solve this question like this. Since you know sum of the roots is equal to minus b by a, product of the roots is equal to c by a. You will try to take LCM here. 
a alpha plus b into a beta plus b whole square is LCM. Numerator will be this into 1 plus this into 1 that will be a alpha plus b whole square plus a beta plus b whole square. Then you will try to expand the squares and you will use alpha plus beta and alpha beta and you will try to calculate, but you will get the answer, but the method is very long. So, what is the correct approach? Since alpha and beta are the roots of that equation, substitute alpha and beta, the equation should be satisfied. If I substitute alpha, I will get a alpha square plus b alpha plus c is equal to 0. Similarly, if I substitute beta, a beta square plus b beta plus c is equal to 0. Replacing x by alpha and beta, you will get two equations. Now, look at this, we, got, we want a alpha plus b and a beta plus b. So, taking alpha common from first to two terms and taking c to right hand side, this can be written as alpha into a alpha plus b is equal to minus c. Similarly, here beta into a beta plus b is equal to minus c. So, here you get 1 by alpha plus beta is equal to 1 by a alpha plus b is equal to minus alpha by c and he similarly here 1 by a beta plus b is equal to minus beta by c. Now, substitute in the expression 1 by a alpha plus b whole square plus 1 by a beta plus b whole square. If you substitute here minus alpha by c whole square alpha square by c square plus 1 by a beta plus b whole square is beta square by c square. Now, c square is LCM, numerator is alpha square plus beta square. How to calculate alpha square plus beta square? We can write alpha square plus beta square as alpha plus beta whole square minus 2 alpha beta by c square. Substitute alpha plus beta and alpha beta. Alpha plus beta is minus b by a, minus b by a whole square is b square by a square minus 2 into alpha beta is c by a. So, 2 c by a whole divided by c square. Now, taking LCM in the numerator, a square will be the LCM, then you will get a square c square as denominator and the numerator will be b square minus 2ac. <coughs> so, that is the value of this expression. Next, <coughs> if one root of the equation x square minus x plus k is equal to 0 is square of the other, find the value of k. The equation is x square minus x plus k is equal to 0. Let us suppose one root is alpha, then what is the other root? One is square of the other, no? we have to take the second root as alpha square. Okay. Then the points are <coughs> the formula we have discussed today are just sum of the roots product of the roots only. So, write sum of the roots alpha plus alpha square is equal to minus b by a means 1. Next product of the roots is alpha into alpha square is alpha cube is equal to k by 1 k. Then how to find k? We have to eliminate alpha from these two equations and get the value of k. Cubing this on both sides because alpha cube is there, I am cubing. It is 1 cube is 1. What is a plus b whole cube? 
a cube plus b cube a cube is alpha cube plus b cube is alpha square whole cube is alpha power 6 plus 3 a b into a plus b 3 into a b is alpha cube into a plus b is alpha plus alpha square is equal to 1 a cube a plus b whole cube is a cube plus b cube plus 3 a b into a plus b now alpha cube is k alpha power 6 is k square plus 3 into alpha cube is k alpha plus alpha square is 1 is equal to 1 then you can write it as a quadratic equation k square plus 4 k minus 1 is equal to 0 now we have to find the roots now first if you try to try factorization 1 into minus 1 is minus 1 we cannot write minus 1 as product of two factors whose sum is 4 so here the only method is by applying the direct formula minus b plus r minus root or b square minus 4 a c by 2 a so k is equal to minus b means minus 4 plus r minus root b square 16 minus 4 a c is minus 4 into 1 into minus 1 plus 4 by 2 a then what are you getting this is root 20 you can write root 20 as 2 root 5 minus 4 plus r minus 2 root 5 by 2 so you will get dividing by 2 you will get minus 2 plus r minus root 5 so there are two values of k next question very simple question if sin theta and cos theta are the roots of this quadratic equation find the condition condition means relation between the coefficients if sin theta and cos theta are the roots sum of the roots is sin theta plus cos theta is equal to minus b by a and product of the roots is sin theta cos theta is equal to c by a now we know that relation between sin square sin theta and cos theta is sin square theta plus cos square theta is equal to 1 we can write sin square theta plus cos square theta as sin theta plus cos theta whole square minus 2 sin theta cos theta a square plus b square is a plus b whole square minus 2 ab now substitute sin theta plus cos theta as minus b by a so b square by a square minus 2 into c by a 2 c by a is equal to 1 multiplying both sides by a square you will get b square minus 2 a c is equal to a square is the condition ok next question <coughs> if f of x is a quadratic polynomial such that f of 2 is equal to 5, f of 3 is equal to 10, f of 5 is equal to 26, find f of 4. Usually, you will solve this question like this. You will assume that f of x is ax square plus bx plus c and f of 2 is substituting x is equal to 2 4 a plus 2 b plus c is equal to 5. Similarly, from f of 3 you will get one more equation from f of 5 you will get third equation. By solving the three equations you will get the values of a b c. Then taking those values of a b c you will substitute x is equal to 4 you will get the answer. This is the method which everyone follows many students follow but 
you can solve the question very intelligently by observing the data f of 2 is equal to you observe the pattern this is 2 square plus 1 this is 3 square plus 1 this is 5 square plus 1 you can easily observe f of 2 is 2 square plus 1 f of 3 is 3 square plus 1 f of 5 is 5 square plus 1 is it not? So, in place of 2, 3 or 5, if you take x, then you will get f of x is equal to x square plus 1. This equation is satisfied by 2, 3 and 5. But what is f of x quadratic? Quadratic minus, this is also quadratic, now quadratic minus quadratic it is a quadratic. That means, this f of x minus of x square plus 1 is equal to 0 will be an equation in the form of a x square plus b x plus c is equal to 0. But it is satisfied by 3 distinct values of x 2, 3 and 5. Then what is the condition? It must be an identity. That means, this is an identity that means, f of x is equal to x square plus 1 for all x identity means true for all x. So, we got the function f of x directly then what is f of 4? 4 square plus 1 17 ok this is the correct approach. Next question. Now, I am going to explain some uh, methods of solving equations. See, this is not a quadratic, it is a fourth degree equation, polynomial equation of degree 4, it can be called as biquadratic equation. To solve this, we can convert this into quadratic equations. If you observe the coefficients 1, 3, 5, 7, 1 plus 7 is 8, 3 plus 5 is also 8. So, put them together. You write the first factor and last factor together x plus 1 into x plus 7 and again second and third factors x plus 3 into x plus 5 is equal to 33. Multiply these two, you will get x square plus 8x plus 7 multiplying these two x square plus 8x plus 15 is equal to 33. Now, you observe that x square plus 8x is common. So, let us take this as t. If this is t, what is this? this plus 8 is this. So, this factor is t plus 8, t into t plus 8 is 33, then you will get t square plus 8t minus 33 is equal to 0, which is a quadratic equation now. First try to factorize, what are the factors of minus 33? it is uh, 11 into 3, you can put a minus sign for this or this, but this 8 you should get, some should be 8, so I have to put minus sign for 3. This plus this is 8, so by writing 8t as 11t minus 3t, t square plus 11t minus 3t minus 33 is equal to 0 taking t common from first to t into t plus 11 minus take minus 3 common from these two minus 3 into t plus 11 is equal to 0. Then taking t plus 11 common 
t plus 11 into t minus 3 is equal to 0. Then what are the values of t? t is equal to minus 11 or t is equal to 3. Now substitute t here. t is x square plus 8x plus 7 now. x square plus 8x plus 7 is equal to 11 or x square plus 8x plus Eleven is equal to minus three. Then you can write the first equation as x square plus eight x minus four is equal to zero, and second equation as x square plus eight x plus fourteen is equal to zero. Now you find the roots of the equations by formula minus b plus r minus x is equal to minus 8 plus r minus root over b square minus 4ac, b square is 64, 8 square is 64, minus 4ac is plus 16, 64 plus 16 is 80 by 2. We can write as 80 is 16 into 5, okay. So, we can write this as 4 root 5. square root of 16 is 4 no by 2. So, it becomes dividing by 2 minus 4 plus r minus 2 root 5. This is these two are 2 roots and similarly solving this equation you will get 2 more roots. What are the roots? x is equal to minus 8 plus r minus root over 64 minus 4 into 1 into 16, 56 by 2, simplify. So, you got all 4 roots of the 4th degree equation. This is one approach to solve a 4th degree equation. Let us take another question. In this question, 5 plus 2 root 6 whole power x square minus 3 plus 5 minus 2 root 6 whole power x square minus 3 is equal to 10. We have to find the product of all values of x which satisfy this equation. First observe the equation, it is not a direct quadratic equation, no? so we have to observe. Why is it given that 5 plus 2 root 6 and here 5 minus 2 root 6, there must be some relation between them. If you observe the product of 5 plus 2 root 6 and 5 minus 2 root 6. is how much a plus b into a minus b is a square minus b square, a square is 25, 5 square minus b square is 2 root 6 whole square is what? 24, 25 minus 24 is 1. So, product of this and this is 1, okay. So, we can write this as 1 by this, we can write 5 plus 2 root 5 minus 2 root 6 as 1 by 5 plus 2 root 6. So, the given equation can be modified as I will write 5 minus 2 root 6 as 1 by 5 plus 2 root 6 whole power x square minus 3 means 1 by 5 plus 2 root 6 whole power x square minus 3 is equal to 10. 1 power x square minus 3 is 1 only. Now, let us take 5 plus 2 root 6 whole power x square minus 3 as t. Let 5 plus 2 root 6 whole power x square minus 3 be equal to t. Then this will be 1 by t. What is the given equation? t plus 1 by t is equal to 10 then multiplying by t on both sides, you will get t square plus 1 is equal to 
tan t. You can further write it as t square minus tan t plus 1 is equal to 0, taking tan t to a left hand side. Now find the roots, t is equal to minus b plus r minus formula, it cannot be factorized, minus b means 10 plus r minus root b square minus 4 ac is 10 square 100 minus 4, 4 into 1 into 1, 4, 100 minus 1 is 96 by 2a, 2a means 2 and you can write 96 as how much? 16 into 6, is it not? Square root of 16 is 4, so you can write this as 4 root 6 by 2. What are you getting? 5, 10 by 2, 5 plus r minus 2 root 6, that is t. Now, we want the values of x, no? So, if this is t, 5 plus 2 root 6 whole power x square minus 3 is equal to, let us take plus sign here, 5 plus 2 root 6, then bases are same, so power should be equal, this power is 1, then what we will get x square minus 3 is equal to 1, we will get x square is equal to 4 and x is equal to how much plus r minus 2. Next, you take the other value. If t, t means 5 plus 2 root 6 whole power x square minus 3 is equal to 5 minus 2 root 6. You can write 5 minus 2 root 6 as 1 by 5 plus 2 root 6 or 5 plus 2 root 6 5 plus 2 root 6 whole power minus 1. Then bases are same, so comparing the powers you will get x square minus 3 is equal to minus 1. Then x square will be equal to 2, x will be plus or minus root 2. What is the question? Find the product of all values of x satisfying this equation. So here plus 2 into minus 2 is minus 4, here plus root 2 into minus root 2 is minus 2, minus 4 into minus 2 is how much? 8. So answer is 8, okay. Next question, <coughs> if f of x is equal to some expression is given, find f of a plus b plus c. Here many students will substitute x is equal to a plus b plus c in this expression and try to simplify. So if you substitute x is equal to a plus b plus c, what you will get a square into c plus a into a plus b by a minus b into a minus c, similarly re remaining two terms, then taking LCM and simplifying it be becomes very clumsy. First you understand what is the idea behind the question and observe the expression. If you observe for x is equal to a, this second term and third term are becoming 0. For x is equal to b, this and this are becoming 0 substituting x is equal to b. Similarly, for x is equal to c, this and this are becoming 0. So, if I substitute x is equal to a, what am I getting? a square into a minus b into a minus c by a minus b into a minus c. Next two terms are zeros. 
then cancelling a minus b into a minus c, I am getting a square. Similarly, if you substitute x is equal to b, you will get f of b will be b square. This will be b square, remaining two terms will be 0. Similarly, if you substitute x is equal to c, you will get c square. And here, a, b, c are distinct because we have a minus b, b minus c, c minus c in the denominator. So, a cannot be equal to b. If a is equal to b, denominator becomes 0, it is not defined. Therefore, a, b, c must be distinct for the function f of x to be defined. That means, if you take the equation f of x is equal to x square, it is satisfied by three distinct values of x a, b, c. Okay. And f of x is a second degree expression. See, if you simplify, this is quadratic now, a, b, c are constants. So, this and this two are constants. If you multiply these two, you will get a quadratic. Similarly, this is quadratic, this is quadratic. So, f of x is a quadratic. f of x minus x square is also a quadratic. Now, this equation is satisfied by three distinct values of x. Quadratic equation should have two roots only, no? but it is satisfied by three distinct values of x. What does it mean? It is an identity, but that means f of x will be equal to x square for all x. Okay. What do you want? f of a plus b plus c. will be a plus b plus c whole square. Okay. Next question, solve x plus 1 by x minus 2 is equal to 2 plus 1 by x minus 2. It looks so simple. What is there? just by cancelling 1 by x minus 2, you got the answer x is equal to 2. You will think like that, but if we substitute x is equal to 2 again in the equation, if we substitute x is equal to 2 in the equation, 1 by x minus 2 is not defined, 1 by 0 is not defined. That is why this 2 x is equal to 2 cannot be accepted. Then what is the answer? There is no solution. This equation has no solution. Okay. Next question, find the number of roots of the equation mod x square minus mod x minus 2 is equal to 0. If you factorize this taking mod x as uh, assuming that mod x is some t, you will get the factors mod x plus 1 into mod x minus 2 is equal to 0. So, you will get mod x is equal to minus 1 or 2, but mod x cannot be negative. So, this is rejected then mod x is equal to 2. If mod x is equal to 2, then x will be plus or minus 2. So, the number of roots of this equation is 2. Next question, find the sum of the real roots of this equation. Usually, you will try to solve this equation and get the values of x and find the sum. But the idea behind the question is not that, not finding the actual roots. If you replace x by minus x, what happens? Mod of minus x is mod x. So, the equation remains same. That means, if alpha is a root, then minus alpha is also a root. Substituting alpha it is satisfied, substituting minus alpha also it is satisfied. That means, for every root alpha, there will be another, another root minus alpha. 
So, it may have any number of roots. It may have roots alpha, beta, gamma and so on. But if alpha is a root, minus alpha is a root. If beta is a root, minus beta is a root. You will get the pairs. Therefore, what is the sum of the roots? 0. No need to solve, no need to find the roots actually. So, sum of the real roots of this equation is 0. This kind of ideas you must remember. Yeah, this is a previous JE question, a little tough. If A and B are the roots of x square minus 10x minus minus 10cx minus 11d is equal to 0, C and D are the roots of x square minus 10ax minus 11, 11b is equal to 0, find the value of a plus b plus c plus, c plus d. First, let us uh, write sum of the roots, product of the roots, etc. A and B are the roots of the first equation. So, A plus B is equal to, what is the sum of the roots of the first equation? Minus B by A formula, 10 C. And product of the roots is, A B is equal to, minus 11 D by 1, minus 11 D. Okay. Now, coming to second equation, C and D are the roots of this equation. So, sum of the roots is C plus D is equal to, what is it? 10 A, minus B by A means 10 A. Product of the roots is C D, C into D, C D is equal to minus 11 B by 1, minus 11 B. over. Now, we want a plus b plus c plus d. So, let us add these two. The sum of LHS is a plus b plus c plus d is equal to 10 into c plus a or 10 into a plus c. Okay? Now, you need to find a plus c and get the answer. How to find a plus c? Can you get from this? No. Is it not? So, what we do is substitute a in the first equation and c in the second equation because you want a plus c. Why am I substituting a only not b? Because I am going to find, I am trying to find a plus c. Substituting a in the first equation, a should satisfy the equation now. a square minus 10 a c minus 11 d is equal to 0. Substitute c in the second equation, c square minus 10 a c minus 11 b is equal to 0. Now, observe that 10 A C is common. So, I will subtract A square minus C square. These two are cancelled. Minus 11 into D minus B hmm, is equal to 0. So, A square minus C square is equal to 11 into, I will write minus 11 into B minus D. Now, you can factorize this as A plus C into A minus C. Now, A minus C and B minus D are our problem. So, to get the relation between A minus C and B minus D, I will subtract these two equations. If I subtract these two, what will I get? A minus C plus B minus D is equal to 10 into C minus A. 10 into C minus A means minus 10 into A minus C. Now, take uh, A minus C this side, you will get 
b minus d is equal to minus 11 into if it goes that side it becomes minus 11 into a minus c substitute it here this is a plus c into a minus c is equal to minus 11 into b minus d is this substituting in place of b minus d minus 11 into minus 11 it will be 121 121 into a minus c. So, cancelling a minus c, a plus c is 121. What do you want? a plus b plus c plus d. a plus b plus c plus d is equal to what? It is uh, 10 times a plus c, no? So, multiplying this by 10, you will get 1210. One thousand two hundred and ten is the answer. Now, next question If alpha and beta are the roots of the equation ax square plus bx plus c is equal to 0, find the roots of the equation a cube x square plus a b c x plus c cube is equal to 0. First, if alpha and beta are the roots of a x square plus b x plus c is equal to 0, write sum of the roots and product of the roots. alpha plus beta is equal to minus b by a, alpha beta is equal to c by a. Now, I want to solve this equation in terms of alpha and beta. Now, divide this by a cube, then you will get x square plus b c by a square into x plus c cube by a cube is equal to 0. I am trying to convert the coefficients into alpha and beta. After writing like this, x square, we, let us write this as minus of minus b by a into c by a because we got minus b by a and c by a and what is this c by a whole whole cube means c cube by a cube is c by a whole cube is equal to 0. Now, substitute minus b by a and c by a you will get x square minus of this is alpha plus beta into alpha beta oh into x is there into x into x plus this is what alpha cube beta cube. Now, if you multiply these two x square minus of alpha into alpha beta is alpha square beta plus beta into alpha beta is alpha beta square into x. How can you write alpha cube beta cube? It is clearly product of these two. It, you can write it as alpha square beta into alpha beta square is equal to 0. Now, observe it it is in the form of x square minus sum of the roots into x plus product of the roots is equal to 0. So, directly you can get the roots as alpha square beta and alpha beta square. So, the roots of the equation are alpha square beta and alpha beta square. Okay? Next question let alpha and beta 
be the roots of x square minus 6x minus 2 is equal to 0 with alpha greater than beta and a n is defined as alpha power n minus beta power n where n is some integer positive integer greater than or equal to 1. Find the value of a 10 minus 2 a 8 by 2 a 9. First alpha and beta are the roots of that equation. So, a 10 means what? Alpha power 10 minus beta power 10. A 9 is alpha power 9 minus beta power 9 and A 8 is alpha power 8 minus beta power 8. How to calculate? You can find the roots, but roots are not coming as integers. You are getting some irrational roots. How can you substitute uh, the root, irrational roots here and finding the power of 10, power of 9, etc.? So, that is not the approach. If you carefully think, alpha satisfies the equation. So, I can substitute alpha in the given equation. Alpha square minus 6 alpha minus 2 is 0. Similarly, beta also satisfies the equation. So, beta square minus 6 beta minus 2 is equal to 0. Then how will I get these terms? Multiplying this first equation both sides by alpha power 8. Why alpha power 8? Because multiplying by alpha power 8, this becomes alpha power 10 this becomes alpha power 9 etcetera. So, I am multiplying the first equation by alpha power 8, then I will get alpha power 10 minus 6 alpha power 9 minus 2 alpha power 8 is equal to 0. Similarly, multiply the second equation by beta power 8, you will get beta power 10, beta power 8 into beta square is beta power 10 minus 6 beta power 9 minus 2 beta power 8 is equal to 0. Now, what should I do to get the a 10, a 9, a 8? I should subtract. You can get the idea very easily. Subtracting these two, this minus this is a 10. I will write directly a 10 minus 6 is common, 6 into alpha power 9 minus beta power 9, that is what a 9 minus 2 into alpha power 8 minus beta power 8 is a 8, should be 0. Then in order to get this, first plus last, take 6 a 9 to right side, a 10 minus 2 a 8 is equal to 6 a 9. Now, denominator is 2 a 9 now, divide both sides by 2 a 9. a 10 minus 2 a 8 by 2 a 9. What will you get on the RHS dividing by 3 a 9, uh, 2 a 9? It will be 3. So, the value of this expression is 3. Okay. So, remember this approach substituting the roots and uh, multiplying both sides by alpha power 8 or alpha power something and you can solve some questions like this. Next question, if alpha and beta are the roots of a x square plus b x plus c is equal to 0, find alpha power 4 plus beta power 4. We can uh, try this approach, actually there are two methods, one is you have alpha plus beta is equal to minus b by a, alpha beta is equal to c by a. Take alpha power bit, alpha power 4 plus beta power 4, first question. You can write it as alpha square plus beta square whole square minus 2 alpha square beta square. 
Okay. Now again alpha square plus beta square can be written as alpha plus beta whole square minus 2 alpha beta whole square minus 2 alpha square beta square. Substitute alpha plus beta and alpha beta and simplify. Okay. This is one approach. Another approach is substitute alpha and beta in the equation, substituting alpha you will get it like this. Multiplying both sides by alpha, alpha, uh, but we want alpha power 4 plus beta power 4. Na? So, multiply both sides by alpha square, then you will get a alpha power 4 plus b alpha cube plus c alpha square is equal to 0. Similarly, substituting beta and multiplying by beta square, you will get a beta power 4 plus b beta cube plus c beta square is equal to 0. Now, for getting this, we should add. Adding these two, a into alpha power 4 plus beta power 4 plus b into alpha cube plus beta cube plus c into alpha square plus beta square is equal to 0. Alpha square plus beta square you should calculate like this alpha plus beta whole square minus 2 alpha beta, but alpha cube plus beta cube how to calculate alpha alpha plus q plus beta cube is alpha plus beta whole cube minus 3 alpha into alpha plus beta. So, you can calculate this. So, you finally calculate alpha power 4 plus beta power 4. Okay. The calculation part you, you only finish. Second part, alpha power 1 by 3 plus beta power 1 by 3 if you want. take cube of this, its cube is a plus b whole cube is a cube plus b cube plus 3 a b into a plus b. So, its cube of this is alpha plus cube of this is beta plus 3 into a b means alpha power 1 by 3 into beta power 1 by 3 into alpha power 1 by 3 plus beta power 1 by 3. Okay. Uh, here I think uh, this is difficult because this is cubic equation. Suppose this is x, it is x cube is equal to alpha plus beta minus b by a plus 3 into c by a power 1 by 3 into x. If the values of a, b, c are given, you can try to solve the cubic equation. Okay. So, let us leave the second question. Similarly, alpha power my 5 minus beta power 5 is you can factorize alpha power 5 minus beta power 5 as alpha minus beta into alpha power 4 plus alpha cube beta plus alpha square beta square plus alpha beta cube plus beta power 4. Alpha minus beta, I have given the formula for difference of the roots in the beginning of, in the beginning of the class. Alpha power plus 4 plus beta power 4 already we have calculated. From these two, if you take alpha beta common, you will get alpha beta into alpha square plus beta square. So, that you can calculate. This is alpha beta whole square, you can calculate, substitute. You will get some uh, expression in ABC. Okay. So, with this uh, we are going to conclude the session for today. We have, we have solved 15 questions and uh, in the next class we are going to discuss nature of the roots. Okay. That is the subtopic for the next class. Okay. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.